set up that way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, I think this is everybody. Um, so that was the first breakout session, talking a little bit about the differences between um, the language of math and the language of biology. And so, as we mentioned, there are some big differences sometimes that pop up. Um, I mean, it's curious to get some uh, feedback from the group here um, about some conversations that people had. Um, was there any um, interesting observations or uh, funny anecdotes that came out of that and you'd like to share with uh, everybody? Feel free to just raise your hand and go for it. Sure. Uh, I think we were breakout session group one, Melanie's group. Uh, one of the things, talked through the words, one of the things that came up was the idea of factor and how uh, in biology terms, factor can also mean like a transcription factor, which could be another name for a protein or it's an older um, description of a protein where a math student or professor may never have heard that and um, the factors for them would be more in sort of oriented towards the math scope of things. And the digit, of course, could be a finger or a, a series of numbers and, uh, and just how uh, difference, how those differences can sometimes confuse students if they are taking those same classes at the same time where they're seeing these words used in different contexts. I hope I did this justice. Yeah, great observations. It definitely can throw students for a loop. And I think we'll all start to realize that um, when we start working um, in the math and biology languages, um, I know Jen and I had talked about in our groups how sometimes it can feel very uncomfortable. Like, you know, you know what you mean, but there's, there's a language disconnect there. And then everyone's just like, hold up, what does that mean? And it's surprising at how often that happens, even though, you know, we've all published papers that's dealt with this, like exponential functions or whatever, the way that the language difference between them can really throw people for um, a loop that is um, both illuminating and sometimes just kind of um, uh, surprising in the same sense. Any other thoughts that we have on this? Go for it, Stephanie. I'll just say my group is, was missing its biologists. So we had four mathematicians trying to think about what words biologists would use that we would also use. And not gonna lie, we were struggling. Um, in addition to the ones that you provided us, we did come up with solution. And the only reason probably we came up with that one is because my incubator from the fall that's what we dealt with. We did a project on osmosis and linear correlation. So we had, you know, model cells in solutions. And then, you know, we did, as mathematicians, we talk about solutions of equations. So <clears throat> that's a little bit different. And I can imagine if you tried to use those in the same, you know, sentence or even the same project, students would be really confused about which one you meant when. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I think there is a lot of hidden confusion that we don't realize that students are going through. And we think that's one of the benefits, even though it's not necessarily a specific product, but just understanding those differences in languages and being aware of them can really help them out. All right. So we'd love to continue this conversation here, but we're all aware that um, we're all very busy people. So we'd like to turn this over to Deb for the next section of our um, intro that we have. So this next part, we're going to throw you back into the breakout rooms um, with your incubator groups uh, to talk with your facilitators and with your group about what the incubators are going to look like and what, you know, just kind of get to know each other. It's going to be quick, like about 10 minutes, and then we'll bring you all back here in case you have any questions for us. That sound good? That sounds good. I will throw you all back into your rooms. Have fun. you are on it you're like you're, you guys were the first ones with everybody here first yeah. ones back into the room I like the pressure on my group and say, <laughs> yeah we'll be the first ones done with our uh, incubator too I'm gonna hold us to it oh, I'm, yeah. I'm excited I love it <laughs> so I hope everybody got a chance to to chat a little bit about uh, the incubators 
happening. And so I just wanted to open up for questions for a few minutes um, so that we are, as we are here to help answer any of those. Well, uh, if Kevin here, how long has this group been doing this? This is my first time um, realizing existed, not that it did not exist before, but I'm really curious because it sounds really cool. So um, we got the grant in 2019 and we held our kickoff meeting at the end of February, 2020. Um, and I'm guessing that for most of the people at the kickoff meeting, it was the last public travel any of us got to do. <laughs> um, and so uh, our first round of incubators were run entirely within the pandemic during the mad scramble to, to go to remote learning and um, I'm super impressed with the network and the participants for, for sticking with it and, and generating things during that. Um, this grant is funded through 2024. Um, so please plan on continuing to participate. <laughs> this is, we, we don't want anybody to feel like this is a one-off. Um, and even past that, we're hoping to uh, have spin-offs and have it continue. That answer your question. I guess uh, one one more follow up. Has this group? Um, I got I had a chance to participate a couple years ago in a group called Needed Math, uh, where they it was a group uh, a two day thing, and um, I would be happy to share the the final notes and the the. Um, what we've learned from it to the to this group if you're interested that would be fantastic thank you that yeah, would be, that would be you're looking to bridge math and uh in real world uh business applications what the students would need to do and make it less scary yeah please feel free to post anything like that that you think the community could benefit from in the forum on the qb at cc page that is for you guys to use and share resources So slightly not related to QB at CC, but how do you get the little time clock up in the breakout rooms that counts down? <laughs> that was new magic I found today. So when you set up your breakout room, um, there's like an options tab. And now it's that it, you can have the breakout rooms close automatically after a certain amount of time. And so I put in 10 minutes. And then when I opened it, it had the, the clocks in there. But yes, I thought that was a very useful addition to Zoom. Yes, thank you for sharing. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, well, we want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, we're happy to stay and answer questions if you have additional questions, but uh, we do want to wrap the meeting up and let you, you get back to your, your very busy lives. We're so happy to have you participating. Welcome to the QB at CC Network. And we're looking forward to seeing what you produce in the incubator. Um, feel free to reach out to uh, any of the QB at CC steering committee or your facilitators if you have any questions whatsoever. And have a great day. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you. Thank you all. Like Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Thank everyone. You, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Okay, I'm gonna 